Hi everybody, I'm Trixie Mattel and welcome back to the Pit Stop. And I am here today with the large and in charge, chunky at funky, kimchi. Yay! Yay, it's me. You are so beautiful, I can't even bear to look at you. Look at me. Bear you to look. will look at me. Bear to look at I you. Know. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, how are you enjoying the season so far? The season is really amazing, and it's really hard to tell who's going to be in the top or bottom because they're all very talented. It's just a hard cast. Like, there's no, like, front runner. No, and it's like, literally people are in the bottom or almost going home, like, every day. It's crazy. Yeah, I couldn't handle it. So, last week, Manila beat Trinity the Tuck and sent Gia home packing. How did you feel about Gia going home? I guess competition-wise, she was doing the worst. However, I want her in every single episode because, like, she is entertaining television. That's the thing. We were watching and I was like, I love the drag, but the only time I'm jumping out of my seat screaming is for the drama. Exactly. So, elephant in the room. Manila was considering sending Valentina home last episode because she said Valentina was the strongest competition. Do you think Manila being open about this strategy, do you think that's gonna put like a target on her back? I think people like Trinity are gonna be like, I'm not shady and I think that's shady. Trinity's one of those people, it's really hard to know like what she's really thinking. Well, because if Trinity's like, if you find Valentina to be threatening, I'm the one winning challenges, are you gonna send me home next? It's true. Because the more you win, the more people are like, this person has to go home or nobody can win. No one has made up the rules. You get to create, and create your own rules, right? Yeah. So the only moral compass is yourself. That's the problem. We use drag queens as moral compass. <laughs> and, and then we're surprised when they're assholes. <laughs> so we're moving into the maxi challenge, an improv acting comedy challenge called Jersey Justice. Let's break down the performances. It's Naomi and Manila doing You Made Me Look Like a Bitch, Bitch. How do you think they did? I think they were both hilarious. I know Naomi personally, and her playing this role is her really stepping out of her box. I agree. Because normally she talks in a very monotone voice and she's very soft-spoken. I feel like she was giving her 200%. To be in a scene with Manila and not be like pulverized, Yo. you're pretty good. I feel like they set the tone for like the challenge and like what to expect from the other girls too. Totally. Manila also, I mean, listen, I know that she was supposed to look ridiculous, but let's be honest, when she showed that wig, you and I were like, we're like, that wig is everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, we want that wig. Yeah, I'm like, can we get two of those? And then following them, it was Latrice, Monet, and Monique doing How About Them Cakes. It was not it, sis. I mean, this challenge was also made for someone like Monique, who just like her talking normally is over the top, you know? Yeah. That's just kind of person she is. Yeah, which is why it's surprising somebody like Monet and Latrice couldn't meet her there, because like, they're not quiet. No. So it was weird to see Latrice kind of like, I mean, she almost cowered a little bit. Latrice totally fit into the background, which all happens, you know, like you're under so much pressure with these things. And then Monet came in kind of late in the scene mm -hmm. and didn't really contribute much. Have Initially she was funny. I feel like she yeah. had potential, but I feel like their biggest downfall was not having like a complete narrative. It just didn't feel well thought out as some of the other groups. And honestly, Jersey, nobody there was really giving me Jersey. No. You're gonna stand in front of Michelle Visage and not do something Jersey. You it's know? true. Like you, like you have the inspiration right there that you see every week. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, lastly, we have Valentina and Trinity. I was snookered by Snooky. What did you think? For me, Valentina stole the show. It was she, amazing. She had the characterization down, and she was funny. And then all of her like improv and her like little back and forth were hilarious. And Trinity was great. Yo. But I think next to Valentina, yeah. Valentina's was more specific. Yo. I mean, Trinity's look to me, I didn't see that as Jersey. I mean. To me, that's like an outfit you wear like when you're performing your second number on a Saturday night. Second, yeah, second, second number. Second <laughs> number. Yes. And that's when you do like your Christina Aguilera B-side. Yo. <laughs> that's not that fast. So you can just walk and take money. Exactly. Totally. So now overall, who stood out in the challenge the most? Monique, Valentina, and probably Manila. Yeah, definitely for sure. But for me, Valentina was the funniest. I think I agree. Maybe Manila for me, but I think so. I mean, Valentina was great. I was literally like laughing out loud like during her parts. Yeah. What about your bottoms? Definitely Latrice. I know. Which is unfortunate. And I guess between Naomi, Monet, and Trinity, like I don't think Trinity or Naomi deserves to be in the bottom. So Monet wasn't bad at all. But I think just because like it's getting down to the wire and there's only so many girls left. That's the thing. Just by default, Monet's in the bottom. Yeah. It was Latrice and it was Monet. Again, Monet wasn't bad. She just wasn't the yeah. best. That's the bummer. So we're back in the workroom and the queens seem to all have like a sense of, I'm fine, even though some queens are like, Latrice, you're not fine. In those moments, like you just genuinely don't know like how the judges will respond to you. You don't know how you did. Actually, you know what? Scratch that everything back. You know when you did bad. 
I was just gonna tell you that I was just like, I think when you do bad, you know. Or sometimes like you're in denial and then maybe you just like believe in like the magic of reality television. It's like <laughs> maybe they'll come through for me. I'm concerned that Latrice, I mean, as a viewer, mm -hmm. she was so clear on the bottom. So it's fascinating that she thought she was like cool for the summer. Summer, yeah. Okay, curves and swerves on the runway. So for the runway, who's your fave? I love Naomi's, Trinity's. I would have liked Monique's if it wasn't a different print. Can we stop with the brown cow? Like, we get it. Like, you had a moment on the show. But I don't like, like to be hit over the head with anything. But the thing is, like, I like it when it happens, like, naturally. And, you know, she said it on the show, and then, like, the fans caught on. And it says it, like, she's, like, forcing it down her throat. I feel like she's going to be riding at a drag con on a cow. Totally. Like, we're headed in that direction. She's going to be selling cows off the street. We're going to be like, where is she? Oh, girl, she quit drag. She owns a dairy farm. Totally. <laughs> Well, she still looked cool, and she I think that runway, it seemed very high production. It's part of the reason she won. Yeah. Can we just talk about how this is Naomi Smalls' most over-the-top padding look? And she just looks she like a normal, normal person. Yeah. I mean, she looks incredible. Like, she looks amazing. Her waist is so tiny. At first, I was like, what is this? This doesn't fit the look. And I was like, oh, this is her with pads. Yeah, like, she looks right. She looks like a woman, like an actual woman from, like, the 60s. Yeah. Oh, my God. Trinity Taylor's curves and swerves. I didn't really get it at first until I saw the texture of it, and I was Yo. like, it's swirly and swervy all over. And then did you see like the little like scalloped pattern? Yes. Like all over? It was amazing. I think I'm gonna say the exact same thing. Monique, if it was a different print, mm -hmm. Trinity and Naomi. I agree. And then who was your bottoms? I would say my bottoms were Latrice because it's so, it's beautiful, but like plain and boring. I know. It was a bummer because curves and swerves. Latrice is maybe one of the most curvaceous drag queens ever on Drag Race. But the problem was, it was so much like what Latrice delivers every week, no matter what the theme is. Everybody brought something new. And I feel like the outfit that Latrice wore is something that you've already seen like Latrice in, and it wasn't anything like new or exciting. And there's no narrative to it. No, it was, it's just a gown. Yeah. Like there's no story. Does she look beautiful? Yes. yes. Absolutely, but it didn't change my life. Right. What do you think about Valentina's look? I have a lot of opinions about this look. Tell me. <laughs> I like the idea of it. Me and too. I like where she was going with it. But yeah. to me, it looked poorly made and it wasn't aesthetically pleasing. That's the main problem with it. It was hodgepodgey. It would have worked better in like a photo shoot setting, but for like runway, she just looked unfinished and a little bit messy. It yeah. wasn't my favorite look. For the judging, Manila is in the top for the second week in a row. She's a force to be reckoned with, you know? That's fierce. And she's joined by Monique Hart. This is her second win, too. Monique won the first week. So that's fierce. Yeah, she deserves it. So were these the right tops, you think? Yeah, I agree. If Valentina's runway was presented cleaner, I think she could have been in the top as well. Do you agree with Latrice and Monet being in the bottom this week, then? I would have to, just because there's no other choice. I know, that's the thing. Latrice and Monet did, are not that terrible. It's just like... Well, Latrice was pretty bad. Well, I love Latrice. <laughs> I know, she did do bad this week. So we're back in the workroom and emotions are running very high right before the elimination. I mean, I don't think we've ever had this before where we get right on the couch and everybody in the room is like, Latrice could go home. Manila's a wreck. Yo. Latrice is a wreck. You have like Monique and Monet who are friends and you have Latrice and Manila who are friends. You know, each of them are like battling to save their friends. Either way, it's gonna be a situation. I would pick my friend. Really? Well, no, not just because of my friend. Unfortunately, Monet has also won a challenge and Latrice hasn't. But then from like a competition perspective, wouldn't it make sense to get rid of Monet? You get rid of someone who's competition, but you pretend it's not about that. Yeah, exactly. No, she fought You me. cry about it. Yeah, and you know. no, she slapped me. But even though you're like, no, she's too fierce, she's gotta go. So it's time for the lip sync for your legacy. Mm -hmm. What do you think about these performance looks, first of all? Um, Manila looks like an Asian David Bowie. <laughs> this wasn't my favorite look of Manila. Manila has some amazing looks. Girl, she was the newest consultant at the Hot Topic. <laughs> totally. <on Hollywood> Boulevard. <laughs> and Monique looked like Tina Turner. Monique looked awesome. I think she got excited about lip syncing and maybe put on too much highlighter in, th in this area of her face. Yeah, that area just looked white. It looked really like, white. Like, girl, like, that is not your highlight color. No, she looked great in that choppy little Tina Turner wig. Oh, totally, that hair looked so beautiful on her. And you know she pinned it in because she was like, yeah! Like, this hair is not going anywhere today. So the lip sync starts, what's going on? So you know like how certain lip syncs, the moment song comes on like, you know like certain girls gonna win right away. Yeah. It's not always about like looking the part, but like they just like like channel the song. She was feeling it. She it's was a good feeling song it. for her. And Manila's a great lip singer too, by the way. Yep. But it's, this was Monique's week. Honestly, maybe she threw the lip sync. Maybe Manila was like, I don't wanna win. 
Conspiracy I'm gonna theories. put on this black camisole. Like, I Latrice is my biggest competition, so I want her to go home. So I'm gonna give this win to Monique. So that way, Manila can be like, no, girl, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Monique wins and sends Latrice home. What did you think? Did you agree? I thought Latrice would be in the top three of All Stars when they announced the cast. I didn't expect her to go home this early. And it's like a shocker, and I'm sure it's going to be a shocker for the viewers as well. They're going to be at the bar, and they're going to be drinking there, and then they're going to open their mouth and then go, <gasps> drop the drink. Yeah. <gasps> I just lost 50 bucks. <laughs> my fantasy league. Yeah, my fantasy <laughs> league. It's a bummer. And you know, I bet you Latrice did not envision herself going on this early either. Yo. So now we got six queens remaining. Who's your front runner at this point? Completely based on the scores, I would say Manila and Monique. Yeah. But also, Naomi's been serving on the runway. And I feel like that's just my homegirl, so I'm just, you know, also, I will always incredible. like back her up. She's incredible. I don't think people actually like know like how fierce of a queen Naomi is. Totally. I will say my front runner, I mean, this is kind of maybe shocking and, and appalling, but even though she doesn't have the most wins, I think Trinity mm -hmm. seems like she's either winning the challenges or landing like in the high middle. That's and true. her runways have been murderous. And when I got back from All Stars from filming it, I got back on tour and I remember Trinity said, I hope you win because I'm in win All Stars 4. She's been like dead set on winning All Stars for a long time. Damn. Ah, oh, well, this show just keeps getting better and better. Thank you for joining me, Trixie Mattel, down here at the Pit Stop with our very special guest, Kim Chi. Thank you for having me. Join us next time on the Pit Stop. Bye. Bye. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> the <strum. laughs> Hey, squirrel friend, when one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing. Go ahead. I support you. <laughs>